Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaykum salam rahmatullah. What is the best way to move back into the heart when the overthinking head has overtaken us? Your meditation inshaAllah. <clears throat> Everything about the tafakkur, the contemplation and you know after you do your salah uh, from like asr when you're home and maghrib time is sit and just contemplate. Make your connection, do the awrat, make the connection with the shaykh, feel the light, the energy, play some salawats, visualize that you're in Medina with the shaykh connecting your heart and that let us to feel the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and spend just moments to connect the heart. And it's an it's a instrument what you give it, it will become powerful. If not all day long we're using the head and the, and the internet and the phone. So of course then you become top heavy where the head is, is, is too, too much, too much, too heavy. And this is all essential teachings because as soon as you connect your heart, the spiritual transmission and the spiritual waves are just waiting to be sent into the hearts. But people are, are being uh, distracted by shaitan to move with their head and to only occupy their head and to only entertain their head. So all the frequencies are only coming into the head. As soon as you shut the head frequency off and just a little bit contemplate and, and make and play salawats and make that connection, immediately you feel the joy that entering into the heart and dressing it with light and blessing it with light inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is the reality of lucid dreaming? You know everyone has a different description in this new age world, so I have no idea. What is it that you have to specify more, what do you mean by lucid dreaming? So what did somebody describe to you and then how we would equate it into Islamic terminology is what's important. But just new age terms people think that the, uh, like when we talk about the jinn, is this the Anunnaki's and are the Anunnaki's coming? These are just vocabulary that you've learned from YouTube. So doesn't mean these are haqqaiqs. So don't, don't worry about these names and then these things but give me the understanding so that we can give an understanding from the Islamic perspective inshaAllah if Allah allows. But just taking YouTube names if it, as if it's true and then trying to understand them because we have other emails of naming this race and that race and, and the Babaji race, the Anunnaki race, the Gamu Babu and all these things. So you know these can be infinite amount of YouTube uh, channels and we don't know where they got their information. But instead of trying to worry about naming them, don't get lost in that. Understand what's being said about connecting your energy and building your energy. And once you build your energy you can go meet them and clarify what their names are if that's what you want to do. InshaAllah. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum beloved Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, I don't feel anything in contemplation, please help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta try, you know, that, that's you know something that uh, <clears throat> there's no miracle to it. So we've said the steps before, do you donate, do you give your time, are you active in all the platforms, are you sitting for a few minutes every day making the contemplation, you read the article how to connect, you, you held your, your thumb and tried to focus on your heart, you visualize the shaykh in front of you and you cleared out the space, cleared out your thoughts. And alhamdulillah it should, everything is, uh, is by the izzat and might of Allah permission of Sayyidina Muhammad and the support of only Allah. So it's a matter of telling you that you know our life is like you're a beautiful lamp. Some people are very fancy lamps and very ornate and other people are regular lamps. And, and you come and say, look I'm the only lamp that God created that will not turn on. How? You're either missing the plug because every lamp has a plug, are you plugging it in? So either your lamp may not be very strong yet given Allah may have made some people like spotlights and some other people like candles. But Allah created every lamp 
with a plug. But people are not willing to plug in and the plug is the analogy of doing the whole system, you know, getting involved in the tariqah, supporting the tariqah, being of service in our life because our life is of service. Otherwise if everything opens without that foundation, what would be opening? A pharaoh, a pharaoh. It's just an obnoxious, mean, angry, non-generous person with a lot of spiritual power. Why would God want that? So He says, no, no, establish the foundation of what you're going to be opening on this person. So their piety, their good character, their selfless, they give, they serve. When that's burned within their being, no doubt then God opens for them Divinely lights. So that when that opens they understood their life is to serve. Their life is to go out and to do with what God has given to them of power and himma and might to serve humanity and bring them towards the light. If the establishment of that's not there then you're making pharaohs where no they don't feel anything, they don't want to help anyone, they don't want to do anything, they just want a lot of power to come. And those are the people who email, you know, send me the, the divine name, Ismullah al-Azim. It doesn't, doesn't work like that. Allah is, is giving a power, light and energy if we are willing to surrender ourself back to our Lord. So by surrendering myself and that becomes my life is where to find that plug. You find in your life you follow people and those are fake plugs because they don't even know how to teach you how to get to the energy. So you're spending all your life with your plug in your hand and you find, hey that guy also he doesn't even have a plug plugged in. Because he's like a lamp without a plug either telling you, oh I'm no, going to do like that. Those are like the fake gurus. Those are like the stars at night, they say, there's, there's, they're everywhere, you know, in the darkness of uh, space. In that darkness there's also all the fake that they're not plugged in, they don't know how to plug in. So how can they teach you how to plug in? But our life is about how to plug into the power. And as a result you plug in with all of the good characteristics and then that lamp becomes Siraj and Munira that it inherits, inherits from the lamp of Sayyidina Muhammad in which your, your vessel is in, in a way structured correctly with good character and then Allah send the light into it. But that which is not of a, a form in which Allah wants then it has to be disciplined into that understanding and that light deposited into the reality. So to not be able to feel anything I think is impossible if you're following all of the steps of the, the tariqah. So that's better that you email help me at Nur Muhammad and then we send the first email on how to do the meditation. And it has step by step and the videos on the YouTube on how to do the meditation. Make sure that you have timeless reality. So all of these things there are, are necessary inshaAllah. Mm -hmm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Do the events of COVID-19 relate to any of the realities of Lataif al Qalb? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't go by saying the names of things but all I just talked about was about that reality. That every difficulty Allah is sending is definitely to open the lataifs, right? So if somebody, if Allah loves all His creation. If Allah loves His creation and His khawas, the elite in which Allah has dressed and guided them, they understood that this world you had to stop, you had to isolate and you had to do all your spiritual practices isolating yourself from the pandemic of humanity. The real sickness are humans and if you get into them and their desires you, you'll be lost in an instant. So they understood that system so they lived a life of secluding. And they actually went into seclusions and they secluded their lives and they lived a life of seclusion. So then when Allah loves all His creation and the time is ending then no doubt He puts them all into seclusions. So we have talks earlier that all these sicknesses that came these are the big signs for Sayyidina Mahdi 
So of course these are the signs in which Allah shows His dominion. When, when people came and the false Mahdis came and some, some bozo said his face is on the moon and he says he's the Mahdi and he came and he died and is a ridiculous human being for even thinking like that. The power, the izzah and might of Sayyidina Mahdi is so majestic that if people died trying to approach the box of the covenant of Sayyidina Musa because it was written by Divine Power on, on stone, those tablets were put into a box and four angels carried this box. And that was symbolic of the Muhammadan covenant that's upon the heart because Nabi Musa was only a representative of Sayyidina Muhammad The real covenant of Allah is the Muhammadan heart. And that Sayyidina Muhammad put that power and that covenant into the Muhammadan heart. And when the Muhammadan heart is activated they have the same four angels guarding them, Sayyidina Jibra'il, Sayyidina Mika'il, Sayyidina Israel, Sayyidina Israfil and Sayyidina Malik on top and they're guarding that servant's heart and they carry that servant's heart wherever they go. That full open covenant is in the reality of Muhammadul Mahdi, he is the Muhammadan Hadi, the most powerful Muhammadan guide that will enter upon this earth. One vision of him will make many people to die, that they can't even look into his eyes when he gazes upon them and his heart is activated. So. He gives a takbir when he decides that he's going to begin to open what Allah wants him to open from Izzatullah. Everything from Ayatul Qur'an al Kareem is, is all activated by the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad al Mahdi as salam. When Izzatullah, Izzatul Rasul wa Izzatul Mu'mineen is like a lightning coming to Sayyidina Muhammad al Mahdi as that he merely begins to say, Allahu Akbar. With his Allahu Akbar the whole world will be shut down and the freet that are running all of your computers, your, your dishwasher, your washing machine, your blending machine, a remote in your… it all has an ifrit on it. He'll kill all of them with his first takbir and then all of their technologies will stop. So not something anybody can understand. And not anybody crazy and foolish enough to think that they could even carry that name and that title. That that's not a crazy guy in Turkey or surrounded by naked people and that's not another crazy person whose face is on the moon. This majesty and this Muhammadan reality is beyond comprehension. And just the moment it begins to enter the whole earth is going to be trembling. One of its signs was that Allah released those pandemics, that an unseen, unseen enemy that entered onto this earth put nations into fear and everybody into their homes. Ships stopped, oil wells stopped, businesses stopped and they didn't even see anyone. That was just a sign that when Allah began to activate then nobody can comprehend what's going to come onto this earth. So this is not, these are not uh, regular people that came and went and they're going to go around sending emails for people to join with them, this is uh, unbelievable. Yes, yeah, so all these events are all related to the last days and what Allah want from people is open your hearts and open your realities, connect. Open your heart and lataif of your heart so that your heart will become the covenant of Allah and that your heart become Muhammadan heart. Only the Muhammadan heart can carry that reality and then all oh, that we dress with that reality. The Sayyidina Jibra'il is dressing the Muhammadan heart, so the awliyaullah who are warith al Muhammadiyya, they inherit from the Muhammadan haqqaiq and they sit in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Their heart has the light of Sayyidina Jibra'il inside their heart that continuously sending them their knowledges. They have Sayyidina Mika'il inside their soul, the light of Sayyidina Mika'il 
in their soul that brings their rizq and their provisions and prepares them for war. And Sayyidina Israel or Sayyidina Israfil they're continuously teaching them because they have to continuously leave their body, come back to their body, leave their body, come back to their body. They're in a continuous state of flux between life and death, life and death. So of course these angels reside within that Muhammadan heart and then the vessel of their heart that carries the love and ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad so these are, these are all those realities and all these teachings are a preparation for the arrival of those times and to be with the Imam of, of all the realities that will be unlocked upon this earth. Of what only Allah teach is only still hidden. But when Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi coming as the ultimate teacher, he's coming to open those realities upon this earth. So a character that's unimaginable, his personality and persona is not something understood and that none can survive to even live to be with him. We described before in the last days why there's so much death. In last days predictions there was so much death because of the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi that human bodies they cannot tolerate and to live in that light and that reality and they did not achieve with their physicality to be in that presence. So as a result Allah takes their physicality away. But their light now is of allegiance and service to Sayyidina Mahdi That was the hikmah and the wisdom for last days, why would there be so many catastrophic events? Well because the kingdom come. And that will be done, everyone has the same prayer but thinking a different person whose coming is representing the kingdom of Allah and Malik al-Muqtadir, the one whom representing this honoured king. His coming with such a izzat and might when the kingdom of God comes it begin to obliterate everything false upon this earth. Do you think false people are going to be able to stand there in His presence and lie to Him? No, no. If anyone wants to know what that logo of a fire and a dragon and a lion is very clear. The lion is the lion of Allah The phoenix is the bird of the strongest bird, the avenging and the bird of war. That fire is from Allah's fire and Divinely Presence. That that light comes and that power and izzah and might of Allah come. And that is the protection against Dajjal and Dajjal forces and this is the kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad's might and majesty that comes with the izzat of Sayyidina Ali salam and Sayyidina Muhammad and Mahdi salam. That the izzat and might that Allah dressing them with is fires of Jahannam that they come onto the earth with that fire and begin to burn every shaitan that comes. So this is the, the might of Allah's Divinely Kingdom. They're definitely not coming for clay. Spooky. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam. Sayyidi, what is the reality of behind tornadoes and hurricanes? Are they also res the result of the jinn world? Behind what? Tornadoes and hurricanes. It's a movement, the winds and the hurricane because they, they move like the sama, that this energy of, of whirling and the reality of their movement, they move with this whirling and they move like that. So when you sit out somewhere and you see in a dust bowl all of a sudden something moving, that's them moving. And when they move and there are certain paths that move I think two to three times a year, those are the tribes that they move through those regions. And the ones that are moving in those regions, those are mu'min. And they move and they do only the work that Allah wants and you see lots of destruction and very little human destruction because they go around capturing nefarious beings. Only through their movement they can pull their nefarious ones out and they encage them. And you see many, many sort of horrific tornadoes but the life count is very low. It could have been enormous, you know, they, they could throw everybody up in the air and, and, and destroy everything. 
But they are called specific locations to pull out different creatures that are of no need and they encage them. So they have their own community, police force, everything that go on a caravan every year and that's through Allah's might and majesty. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, During tafakkur, if I include loved ones to receive nazar, will I pick up their bad energy? Forgive me for any bad adab. You cut off. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi During tafakkur, Walaykum As Salaam wa If I include loved ones to receive nazar, will I pick up their bad energy? Forgive me for any bad adab. No, yeah. No, anytime you're in tafakkur and contemplation and the zikr, you pray that loved ones to be with you and asking, Ya Rabbi please dress them from that light, Mashaykh dress them from that light and uh, asking from Sayyidina Muhammad dress my loved ones with that light and bring their souls into your, your meditation and into your du'as and into your practices, alhamdulillah, no, no problem. <coughs> Assalamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah On this path of nothingness and silence, how does one deal with oppression? Path of nothingness and silence and how does one deal with oppression? That your prayers of the oppressed are answered by Allah So that this path is not saying that if people are abused or, or being hurt by people just to tolerate, no. You, you take whatever remedy is available to you if, if somebody's harming you and you call the police or whatever you know you're available to somebody. As far as oppression then that's uh, through your prayers or if you have the ability to, to relieve that oppression through yourself or calling uh, somebody for help then no, you try to relieve that. And the oppression that many suffer is just by a, a force in life that to be oppressed with people around you that are just you know not pleasant, not polite and in difficulty or oppressed at work where you really can't say much and they're not giving you the, the credit that you deserve. These are sort of the oppressions that they talk about is that if those you can tolerate and they're not harming you physically then to have patience in life. And patience and good character of Abu the Amri in Allah, in Allahu basirun bi ibad. That for verily Allah you see my condition. That you know, I know that you see my condition, and only Allah can relieve my condition. And that builds the faith and the relationship between the servant and the Creator. And that Allah sees my condition, and only Allah can relieve my condition. And then when you meditate and contemplate, you begin to find that when your relationship with Allah is so strong, you're doing good, you're doing your practices, then Allah must be doing something through love to you. And that's the power of the tafakkur because if you think that Allah has it out for you and you're just always in difficulty, mm, something's wrong. But if I correct myself, correct my actions, do all my practices correctly, have this immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad and I begin to contemplate, why that person's like that? Why this like this? Why like that? Then the wisdom begins to come to your heart that there's a wisdom in it and it's out of Allah's love for you, saving you from something. So nothing comes from Allah without an immense wisdom. But only the patient who endure can reach to its understanding. And that's again if everything's okay, not if people are doing bad things and wondering, you know, why the, their bad karma always coming back to them. Because that's what we said in other talks that the devil inside is calling all the devils outside. So if you think you know things are always coming towards you bad and you say yourself is, oh I'm so innocent and all these bad things are always coming, it's not really probably that way. So there's an inner anger, inner bad character, some inner demon is summonsing all these things. 
So when you take your fight in and begin to clean and purify and, and I'm going to have the best of character, softest character and, and you know good character and again nothing to do with physical abuse. There could be insane people and harming people, that's not, not, not uh, in this discussion we're talking about the, the general rule not an exception. So once we kill the inner beast and subdue the inner bad, he stops calling all the outer bad to come and bother. And then whatever agitation comes in life there must be a wisdom and a hikmah from Allah and He's raising me with this difficulty. Otherwise how am I going to get this maqam if I don't have this difficulty and Allah wants to test my patience. So then say, you wanted this maqam, how did you think you were going to get it? And then you say, okay, alhamdulillah, oh, SubhanAllah, I'll be patient, I'll be patient and have good character. And so there's many, many immense wisdoms when the heart that has a sabirin, has sabr, sabr and patient is patient and then Allah inspire within the heart their wisdom. That that's why these things are in, in the situation they are and look at the reward you're getting, inshaAllah. As Shaykh. Sayyidi, I have left most of the spiritual practices, what to do to come back? I feel like doing nothing now and does watching violent videos on YouTube affect me? Yeah, Devin doesn't help you. <laughs> yeah, Alhamdulillah. No, those are very good for you. Yeah, definitely. Don't matter that you left a thousand times and Imam Jalaluddin Rumi said, even you broke your covenant a thousand times, come, come back again. Maybe it wasn't your time to, to get and to understand that reality, maybe you're not rushed yet. You know there's an expression that they have that you haven't hit bottom. So when people are not getting it, there's too much maybe enjoyment in their life and too many pleasures and they're not at a point where it's… It, there's going to be a point. So there'll be a point in your life where you, you sort of mature and you understand that there's no way but up, there's only… the only way is to go towards Allah and I got to get there and everything else is an immense distraction and uh, Allah will make the servant to understand that. So uh, that's why they said, even if you broke it a thousand times come again because maybe this time is the time in which your heart really understands. So we get many emails that, you know, I've heard your talks maybe for over 10 years the same subject, last night it triggered an understanding for me. So we talk, we talk, okay the 10 is this, the, this reality is this, this reality is this. You don't know when you're ready and that reality actually began to open like a little blossom of a tree, it's now sprouting. So I understood now the importance. Many people don't understand the importance of the madad. Why I have to make madad? Well, I, I need to make madad. I think the talks last week were about that. What was the talk? Magnetism, right? So how, how, are, you, how are you going to ha have any magnetism? How are you going to have tajalli? How are you going to give guidance? How are you going to get guidance? How are you going to have anything if you don't have a magnet within your heart? Either it's just going to come to you because you, you know just it levitates towards you. So then nothing opens for that servant. And then one day they'll realize that, oh now I understood, magnet, I, I got to you know be magnetic. I have to one be able to connect to the shaykh's magnets so that I can get their understanding, get their nazar and their gaze and then to get the fayas and the emanations that are pouring from them, I need to get those emanations directed towards me. And as a result of these emanations once they begin to flow abundantly upon me, I become a magnet too. Because anything that's receiving a lot of magnetic attraction becomes magnetized, right? So then the coiling. You take that metal, you coil it, put an electrical charge on it, you take that metal out, it's actually now a magnet and has been magnetized by an electrical charge. Well the madad and calling all the shaykhs is bringing an electrical charge onto your being that you don't have. And if you do it right and do it consistently so much energy comes onto you until you become a magnet yourself in which you are continuously attracting their attention. 
So that becomes, you know, all the practices. You never know when that knowledge comes. You come, sit one time, ten times, you know, ten years later, two years later, two weeks later, it hits your heart and it goes in and it understands and unfolds its reality, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa How to recognize who is a real Sufi and who is a fake one? Yeah, I think it's important to recognize myself as if I'm real or if I'm fake. For if I become real and focus on myself then all of those answers will become clear for myself, right? So if I'm a… If I'm a give you an example, I'm an angry man, smoking man, bad talking man, do you think Allah going to guide me to like a righteous beautiful shaykh? Or somehow you're going to be magnetically drawn to probably a smoking, angry, yelling shaykh. Met a guy like that in, in Cyprus. And he was talking to Maulana and Maulana is like, you know, <laughs> gave it to him. Because he was talking, yeah, the shaykh I'm, you know, sitting with, he's like this, he's like this, he's like that. And the guy himself was like that. So his character was drawing him to similar characters. When a servant is sincere then really, my Lord I want to get rid of these bad things. I want to get rid of these bad characteristics. And they begin to sincerely try to work on themselves, Allah then guide you towards somebody who's of a sincere nature. And then that sincerity within you and the, the yearning to achieve You'll be directed towards somebody who can get you to your achievement. But if the person is not really interested in achieving anything, it's, oh there's too many stuff here, there's too much stuff, oh, I'm not interested. So you know every magnet is drawn to a similar charge. So you can't make everybody love Prophet but Allah if He put that magnetic reality within the heart immediately their hearts become lo loving and drawn to Allah Then Allah direct that magnet to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Those people are magnetized with that love, they don't want to hear anything but the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And so many of us are drawn like that with that love, we don't want to hear from anything other than that love. Everything else is like garbage for us. So alhamdulillah it's all on the heart and Allah is the one whom holds the heart. Ya muqalib al-qulubi wal-absar The one who can change the heart and change the eyes. That Allah keep our heart to be connected and to guide us based on that sincerity that we want to achieve Ya Rabbi and grant me to achieve into that reality to be amongst those whom have achieved that and will dress me, bless me and take me to that destination inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri Surat al-Fatiha. Ameen. Ameen ya Rabbi.